If you love to build stuff, we've got some really fun building and construction hacks for you today. So I'm gonna show you how to use your speed square to judge the height of something. Like for example, this is a small cabin, but let's say you had a really tall building and maybe you wanna rent maybe a man lift or a piece of equipment. You're not exactly sure how tall that building is. You don't wanna rent the wrong piece of equipment. It's important for this that the square be used level. So I'm actually using this tripod with this little bubble level and I've set the tripod up to be nice and level. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set my square on here and we're gonna have to move this tripod back and forth to find the point in time where my eye, when looking down the back of the speed square here, matches up with the peak of the roof. About right there. So now we've set it looking up, and what we're gonna do is transfer that to the ground looking down. So, and what I've done now is I've set a rock where that line would contact the ground and set it right there. And now I can take a tape measure from the base of this building and measure out on the ground to my rock. And it looks like we're right at about 14 feet, maybe an inch over, something like that. We are right at 14 feet. Be careful with this trick. It's really easy to make a mistake. See how the ridge is about two feet out from the edge of the building? If you measure from the building, you're gonna be wrong. So if you have to, transfer that measurement down to the ground or try to aim for where the building actually intersects the square. If you had a situation where you're trying to decide whether you could fall a tree maybe toward a building or toward a house or maybe toward the street, you can use this trick to figure out how tall the tree is also. So here I have your common speed square. You'd expect to measure rafters, make uh, cuts, cross cuts, things like that with it. Maybe use it as a ruler along the top edge, make straight marks with it, things like that. But I'm gonna show you a really cool hack you can use your speed square to do. For this hack, you're going to make sure that you have a speed square that has a small notch right here at the pivot. If you look really close, this speed square does not have this notch. So to do this one, make sure your speed square has this little notch. For this hack, you're also going to need to have a chalk box. And at the end of your chalk box, you're gonna to wanna to have a hook. So you're on a construction site, job site, DIY site, and you need to make a level line, but either you forgot your level or you just don't have one. And so you don't have the convenience of using a bubble level to make a line. But for some reason, you have your chalk box and a speed square. Let me show you how to make a level line using these two tools. So what I'm gonna do is take the hook from my chalk box and I'm gonna mark, hook it underneath this small cliff on the square. And I'm gonna run my line up through the notch in the pivot. And now we can just drop our chalk box down. Now what we can do is we can look at the very small measurements here are the degree measurements on the bottom of the speed square and we can line the string up with 45 degrees. Once we're there, we can make our mark. And let's make our mark here. Okay, so our mark is right along here and let's check it with our bubble level. It looks really, really good. And of course now, this is a super powerful tool because now you could measure off of this. You can actually measure down and transfer that line if you needed to. Um, you could pull angles from this if you wanted to. Lots and lots of ideas to how to go from this level line and make really useful things from it. The next trick I wanna show you is how to use your speed square as a fence to make really accurate cross cuts. So normally you take your measurement and and then you'd put your square on your material and you make a line, right? And now you wanna to try to freehand that cut with your circular saw. You're gonna line it up and you're gonna kinda of try to find your way across the board and it's probably gonna be pretty good. But let me show you a trick to do this where you can just use your speed square as a fence. So go ahead and line this up with the material and then you'll notice that the table on your circular saw can actually ride against the square as a fence. So what you do is move this over on your material until your saw reaches the zero line on your line. See that? And now we can just make a cut using our speed score as our fence. Perfect. Of course, that's just a small example and you're somewhat limited by the length of your speed square here. This example is really great for quickly cross-cutting things like studs, two by fours, two by sixes, and stuff like that. So if you need to grab something, make a mark, hold it in your hand, and make a quick cut, the speed square is your friend. For this trick, we're gonna save you a bunch of very difficult math. We're gonna show you how to find the center of something, a third of something, or a quarter of something with no calculator. 
So you have this board here and you want to cut it exactly in half. And so you put your tape measure on it and it's 11 inches wide. Well, maybe you're not very good at math or you just want to find a quicker way to cut this board exactly in half. Let me show you how to do that. So what you want to do is set your tape measure on the edge of the board and come out here to a number that's easy to find half of. So in this case, half of 16 is eight. That would be a very easy number to remember. So if we come out here to 16, on the tape, on the edge, and we mark eight on the board, we should be right in the middle of this board. So if we look here, now we're gonna measure half of this board is five and a half inches, and let's go to the other side here, and it's five and a half inches. So that one worked really well. So let's say you wanna cut this board into three. So what's a number that's really easy to divide into three? Let's say 15. So what we can do now is we can mark this board at five, 10 and that should be one third of the board. So here we have about three and three quarters of an inch from this side. And then let's measure again from this side. And we're about three and five eighths. So we're a little bit off on my mark there, but we're pretty close. And then of course, you're gonna wanna transfer those marks further down the board, right? So what you can do is just move a little bit further down the board and make your secondary marks. Now you can just use your favorite straight edge and line up those two marks and make a line all the way down, about like that. Okay, so on this one, we're about three and three quarters, a little shy. On this one, we're three and five eighths. And on this one, we're three and five eighths. So we're a little fat on this side, so maybe you'd cut on one side of the line or the other, and there you go. You have this 11 inch board cut into three individual equal pieces. Do you wanna go into fourths now? So maybe we come back down here to 12 inches. Instead of going higher, where the tape measure starts to slide down the board, let's come back down here to say 12 inches. And now, it's pretty easy to mark this board in three inch increments. So three, six, and nine and if you just repeat that process guess what now you've taken this 11 inch board and you've cut it into four equal pieces so use your imagination you can see how this can be a really powerful tool and this works on sheets of plywood big sheets of plywood especially all the way down to small boards of course if you're one of those people that want to push something to the limit i challenge you to find one one hundredth of a board so just to repeat this we use this trick to find the middle of a board which means you could cut a board in half we showed you how to cut a board in thirds and a board in quarters quickly with no calculator. So for this trick, I wanna show you how to not get frustrated when you're having to measure an inside radius. So let's say you have this, maybe it's a wall or a stud bay or maybe it's the inside of a cabinet and you're trying to measure what, you know, maybe I'm trying to fit a shelf. Can't quite get my shelf in there or something. And man, what's the measurement down here on my tape measure? So a lot of us try to find this measurement. We try all kinds of stuff. We twist the tape measure, turn it. We're just guessing, is it three eighths? Is it half? Is it quarter? And if you're like most people, you guess wrong. So the really simple way to solve this problem is to measure back away from this piece of wood and make a known measurement, something that's really easy to add. So for example, with this one, it would be very easy to add just one inch to this small measurement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here one inch and I'm just gonna make a small mark there. Okay, now I don't have to measure into that radius. I can just measure back this direction to my one inch mark and add one inch. So it looks to me like we'd have still been wrong. So according to my mark, it's not quarter and it's not three eighths. It's actually a 16th over one quarter. And that's why when we try to do that, we guess wrong. This trick works for one inch marks and 10 inch marks. So let's say that you're measuring as one person and maybe you're measuring four or five feet and you're trying to pull an inside measurement. I don't know, maybe you're doing like a, a table and you're trying to measure between the legs or something like that. Instead of pulling a one inch mark and having to come clear down here and try to read your tape measure, you could do something like pull a foot or even 10 inches would be really easy to add. You want to find a number that's really easy to add to your measurement and then before you make your cut don't forget to add. So using my 10 inch mark we can do the same thing. So we had 18 and 3 eighths here. 18 and 3 eighths of an inch. And so now I pulled the mark clear back here to 10 inches and guess what? Here is 18 and 3 8 inches. So it works both ways. For this hack, I'm gonna show you how to use a traditional framing square to lay out stairs quickly, accurately, and efficiently with no margin for error. So typically when you build a stair stringer, you have your rise and your run, your rise and your run, 
and you end up with a set of stairs like this, right? So the framing square can actually represent your run and your rise. So out here would be the tread. This would be the part you step on. And then this would be the riser. This is the part that moves up. And if we set this correctly, it allows us to build a perfect set of stairs on a stringer. But there's a trick. These little gadgets, these are actually called stair gauges and they're a little trinket that allow you to set your framing square up to be an amazing stair building tool. So let's say you have this set of stairs here and you've done all your math and everything and you know that your stairs here, maybe they're going up seven inches for every 10 inches of run. So the riser is seven inches tall and the tread is 10 inches deep. So what I would do is I would set my stair gauge on my framing square here to 10 inches and get it really precise and then crank it down. So here is the tread. This is the part that we're gonna step on. And then here is the riser. This is the part that goes up. I'm gonna take my stair gauge and I'm gonna hook it onto my framing square here at seven inches. Okay, so we've basically created a model of our stair. Our stair goes 10 inches this direction and it goes seven inches this direction. And you can see how this creates a repeatable system. So now if we simply set our square here on the edge of our stringer, we can mark the outside or the back of this square and that will represent the cutout for the riser and the tread. So there is our stair and we can just mark that with an X. And if we cut along these lines, we've built a beautiful step. Here's the thing though. Now I can take this tool and slide it down until right there. So right here, my 10 intersects with this line that I've already drawn. And guess what? We can just repeat that marking. Come over here, make another mark. And then we wanna make sure that we tell ourselves where to cut so we don't cut the wrong piece. And you guessed it, down we go. We wanna make sure that that tin lines up with our original line. And that's how you can quickly lay out a set of stairs to be repeatable and accurate. And if you sort of use your imagination, you can sort of see the stair stringer taking shape. So here's the step, you walk up, here's the step, up, step and you would do this to the correct number of steps for your set of stairs. So you're thinking, man, those stair gauges are pretty cool, but I got a set of stairs I'm trying to build today and I don't have any stair gauges and I don't know where to get any. Let me show you a trick that you can use right now today. So I've just recreated the same effect as the stair gauge, just using some small clamps and a couple of small blocks of wood. What's important is to make sure that the corner of the wood here is what's touching your measurement. The face of the block doesn't really matter because this is what's gonna to touch the edge of your stringer. So by taking extra time to make sure these are super precise, you'll get a really easy to repeat stringer. Of course, if you have a couple of clamps and some blocks of wood, this is a lot faster and you don't have to have an extra tool to carry around. So here we have the marks that we made using our stair gauges and let's just check how well we could repeat that using our blocks of wood. Looks really really good. If we took just a little bit more time and perfected these, uh, we could get them perfect. But of course, if you just, it's, as long as the stairs are duplicatable, I think that's the most important element here. But you can do it with just these little blocks of wood. For this trick, I'm gonna show you how to use a tool that you use all the time for something that you might not know it even can be used for. So this is what's called a plumb bob, and it's designed to transfer lines down to help you make things plumb. It just has a very sharp point on it, and it's very heavy and the string is attached in the middle, and we use it to transfer things up and down to make them plumb. So if we were wanting to transfer, let's say this was a top plate, or maybe a desk, or a cabinet, or a shelf, or something like that, and we wanted to know exactly where this would end up on the floor, we could use our plumb bob to figure that out by simply lowering it down and making sure that the string is making contact with this wood. And once we get the plumb bob to stop moving, where that point is, is exactly where this would be if we transferred it to the floor. So a lot of you out there have a chalk box and we use them to pull lines and snap lines, right? To make cuts and things like that. But what you might not realize is that this is also a plumb bob. Notice the shape of it comes down to a point and you guessed it, it has a string and a hook at the top. It's always amazing to me the amount of thought that's put into a lot of these tools that a lot of us don't even realize are in them, especially from really high quality companies. So take a look at your chalk box and see if it's capable of being a plumb bob.
14 feet tall. So I got something wrong. <laughs>